Hello friends, welcome to the channel Physics by IITians. Today I am with Abhishek who is doing PhD in Norway. So this is Norway, beautiful Tromso. You see the nature here. So this is the mountain and there is the lake and this is, a, this is really beautiful. So I am not here to show you the beauty of Tromso. I am here to tell you some important things that you should know if you are willing to do PhD in abroad or especially from any European universities. So welcome Abhishek. Thank you. So can you please introduce about yourself? Hi, I am Abhishek Ranjan. Um, I am from India and presently I am doing uh, my PhD from uh, the Arctic University of Norway, uh, UIT. This is the northernmost university of the world. Okay, so you are doing PhD in physics? Yes, uh, my PhD focuses mainly on photocaustic microscopy. Yeah, this is a part of physics. Yes. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about your background, your master's and bachelor's? Yes, so I did my integrated uh, master's, five-year integrated MSc from uh, International School of Photonics, Kochi University of Science and Technology. So from 2012 to 2017. And uh, then... Uh, uh, when, while I was doing my master's, I did uh, several uh, internships uh, nationally and internationally. So I got some uh, exposure. I did uh, four internships before coming uh, for my PhD. And uh, this gave me a lot of exposure for my PhD. Okay, so, okay, we are really like, uh, I have many, I received a lot of queries regarding that internship. So we can make a separate video. But today I was thinking, planning to tell us some the formal process for getting a chance admission uh, in PhD here. Yeah, I just, um, so firstly uh, you need uh, you need to have a master's degree and uh, you need to have a certain amount of credits and uh, and then your CGPA must be very good um, and uh, in different countries, different European countries. Uh, the CGPA, uh, the asking for the CGPA is different. So uh, it has to be converted into their system. For example, Denmark have this Danish system, and, but a certain number of credits uh, that has to be completed. Then uh, your CGPA uh, must be good. You should, uh, you should have a very high level of English proficiency. And for that, you have to write uh, IELTS exam and then uh, try to score uh, above uh, 6.5 and as uh, high as you could then you will need uh, recommendations and uh, for the recommendations uh, where you have done your master thesis or where you have done your uh, internship previous internships those professors uh, will be contacted and uh, yeah you need all these uh, things and then you have to apply and then uh, then you will uh, be asked uh, your cv will be sorted and then uh, there is a procedure of uh, sorting the CV and then um, then you will be asked for an interview and based on your interview there will be final selections. Okay, so there is no written exam? No, uh, there is no written exam as such. Yeah. Okay, so you, you talked about that CGPA. So suppose uh, uh, from an Indian university, suppose a central university, a student secure eight CGPA. Yeah, above eight is considered good. Okay, above eight. But it's not only CGPA, it's a lot of other things. Uh, but CGPA is one of the most uh, prominent one. Uh, and it should be above eight. And uh, uh, then you can, uh, uh, if you know certain softwares, which give an edge over uh, the other candidates, mm. if you know certain softwares are, or you have done some quality research mm. or you have published a, a research paper either in a conference or uh, in a... Um, journal that gives you an edge over uh, over other uh, people who are actually applying okay so students you see that cgpa matters a lot like during my masters i was thinking oh cgpa doesn't matter only matters is the knowledge of physics but yeah but at some point but the thing is that uh, you should have knowledge of physics mm. but when you are actually applying mm. and the then official, the official, official people, people, how, how will, do you know? They will how not they? know. Yeah. You. How do they, they will know? just see your CV and based on your yeah. CV, they will sort it out. Yes, they so will it, judge. And then your CV is your reflection of your, your personality. Mm. So 
how will they know that you have a great knowledge of physics <laughs> so there should be something right yeah and the main sort short list is one of the main one of yeah. the most uh, so you won't be even uh, called for interview so it <laughs> doesn't matter so you have to secure a, a above 8 cgpa so please keep it in your mind and also the research that he uh, uh, mentioned that during your masters or bachelors if you have done some good research work yes so like a, a paper journal paper or conference paper publication that will yeah. give you extra benefit extra yes. uh, like uh, 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 opportunity for yeah. Yeah. doing this yeah so i think uh, basic stuff like good cgpa uh, maybe papers uh, good knowledge of english mm -hmm. and then uh, recommendations uh, these are uh, a few basic things uh, that you have to actually uh, you have to do in order to get a phd abroad okay and one thing i also want to know suppose there uh, is an indian student who has no knowledge about the professors so about the universities also like we know very little bit about the name of the universities here so how do you find it out i mean there are several ways of finding out the universities mm -hmm. um so i will go one Two, three, uh, like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a website called Webu Matrices. You can find uh, all the universities uh, on this websites. About the professor name, I I used to find it uh, like if you want, if you are particularly interested in a topic, and then if you just write that topic as a keyword on Google, and then uh, write about like conferences held in this topic, there will be conferences there, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. on uh, in in that conference, all the professors of that. Uh, field actually um, participate and then there you can find all the professor name um then um, uh uraxis is one website uraxis is one website where you can actually find uh, find a phd.com that is another website where you can find uh, phd uraxis jobs as phd so uraxis is where i found uh, this phd position where i'm presently in and uh, so you can go for open positions and you can apply directly so in norway there is another website called jobnorge.com so these websites are where you can actually find uh, the phd positions and uh, you can find the professor and uh, you know um, they, there are two uh, major uh, societies like optical society and uh, which is now optica and then spi mm. so uh, they also have a list of professors so there can, you can also find i also used to find this way so these are some of the ways of finding mm. the professor name yes yes okay that's very genuine information abhishek has shared yes, yes uh, and one more thing is that uh, your statement of purpose that should be good and in order to make your statement of purpose very good uh, you have to read firstly and you have to know your subject very well and then uh, that matters a lot your statement of purpose what you write there and uh, how much keen uh, or how much interested or how much motivated this uh, is uh, shown by your statement of purpose so make uh, a research on how to write a statement of purpose and then uh, yeah then you just shoot like out the, uh, yeah. yes yes that's a very important point that is statement of purpose yes. will you like you are telling people why you are interested to do research in this particular field Yes. So it should be well written. Otherwise, if you don't know the field, how are you interested? So yes. that is the basic question. Yes. It, And uh, I have seen a few uh, students who just write that I am very interested and very interested. <laughs> But professors get a lot of these kind of emails. Mm -hmm. So you will have to uh, you have you will have to do something uh, in order to catch their eyes. And that uh, you have to just uh, do something more than ordinary uh, to. Uh, catch their attention to show the proof that yes it is my it, interest it is so actually have, your interest yeah, and you have, I have proven done it. a lot of things i have done a lot of literature survey i i have queried i have inquired these things i have find it out so it should be like uh, there uh, in your C, uh, cv as well as like cv how do you do this with cv like doing research in that particular field so it will give you the cv that he or he or she has done this research in this particular field so yes right now his or her uh, claim for knowing the field is genuine not rather that just telling i am interested and i am interested so yes 
they never uh, give yeah, you pampering um, with that yeah mm. i mean you can attend conferences uh, mm. you can attend workshops uh, yeah. you can uh, you can learn a software online get a certificate there are several uh, online uh, platforms like coursera edx uh, udacity you can learn um, in many softwares from there and then um, and then you have to master it and then you can put that in cv in order to build your cv firstly you will have to build your cv from scratch and uh, make it uh, make it like uh, very uh, uh, nice in in the sense that it looks that uh, it looks uh, more than ordinary yeah. yeah so don't waste your time it's uh, don't waste your time with web series rather go with coursera and yeah. all this. i i have obtained uh, plenty of uh, certificates uh, oh. from coursera more than 14 you can i mean see it on so my it linkedin so it is free LinkedIn, right linkedin website i mean it's not free uh, mm -hmm. but you can apply for financial aid and that usually gets approved so mine all of them uh, for me got approved and i i think i did four, more than 14 courses and you can share this uh, on your linkedin yeah uh, another thing is uh, networking hmm. uh, you should network uh, with people you should communicate well um, and then um, when you go to conferences i used to go to conferences and meet new people and talk so going with in conferences and having some courses online or doing something knowing better than others is very much advantageous when you are uh, trying to get an admission in Europe so okay so if you can you tell me that is there any advantage of doing PhD in European countries compared to doing a PhD in Indian University or Institute uh, yes uh, there are uh, certain advantages uh, here uh, probably you won't have to slog for many hours like uh, like in Indian system um, you get better paid here uh, abroad and uh, uh, and as far as research is concerned um, so getting uh, a good funding and a good research is a uh, is a little bit tedious in india and uh, here in abroad it's uh, much easier they get uh, good funding for their research and uh, the also the research environment uh, is quite good uh, the work-life balance uh, here is quite good in compare com when you compare this to India. Yeah, so these are some of the factors uh, uh, why I chose to do PhD from abroad. And what is the amount of fellowship? Is it like uh, above more than above? So uh, uh, yes, uh, it depends uh, where you are actually doing your PhD in. Uh, in different countries uh, you uh, get uh, paid differently but uh, when you do your PhD from Scandinavia uh, like you get really uh, good uh, handsome uh, salary as a PhD student yeah. okay so oh, yeah. yeah so like uh, uh, I think all of your query now is kind of I can resolve some of the queries and if you have more queries you can also ask and last question i want to ask you that what is your suggestion or what are the suggestions you would like to give to the bachelors and masters yes so i would say that uh, plan early be proactive and uh, make networks uh, study well and uh, <clears throat> and uh, have a good cgpa uh, respect your professor they will give you recommendations uh, and uh, have a good uh, uh, learning of English, a better uh, communication skill, and uh, yeah, keep learning, and uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I think that should be that should be it. And but planning, uh, let's say uh, early, let's say in first year and second year, when you plan that I have to, I, I plan it in my second year, and then I started building my CV like that. That is very important. If you plan to do your PhD in fifth year and you don't have that much, that good CV for doing uh, PhD abroad then uh, chances are that it will not work but if you plan ahead very early in your uh, bachelors and then you start building uh, and uh, uh, analyzing each day where have you gone and how much have you done and where are you going I think uh, this uh, this will work and uh, then uh, uh, you build your CV and your knowledge base 
and uh, yeah and by god's grace you will certainly uh, achieve your dreams yeah thank you so much abhishek for giving this uh, like really useful helpful motivating uh, talks yes so and yeah. uh, if you have uh, more queries you can uh, reach me uh, on my linkedin um, my name is abhishek ranjan and uh, i think i am searchable there on linkedin and uh, you can ask uh, further more queries there okay yeah. so thank you so much for giving us your precious time and i wish you all the best thank for you. your future you. and also your achievements and research thank you sachi so, for uh, uh, letting me in this video okay so okay friends so for this video this is enough today i think like i, I partly some of your queries can be resolved but if you have more you can definitely post you can definitely ask abhishek personally on the linkedin profile which he has already shared with you and if you also want to uh, know something more you can definitely post and in future we will try to post it as soon yeah. as possible yes. so so thank you for your patience please don't forget to like this video subscribe this channel and share with your friends thank yes. you thank you and also you can ask for the subscription yeah. for our channel yeah <laughs> please subscribe thank you so much yeah. okay